Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I'm Dr. Ramjad Ali dear scholars when analyzing policies in an economy such as that of the United States we need to combine the closed economy logic of the IS and LM model and the small open economy logic of the Mandel Fleming model in this video we present a model for the intermediate case of a large open economy so we are going to discuss a short run model of the large open economy introduction dear scholars uh, a large open economy differs from a small open economy because uh, its interest rate is not fixed by the world financial markets in a large open economy we must consider the relationship between the interest rate and the flow of capital abroad the net capital outflow is the amount that domestic investors lend abroad minus the amount that investors lend here as the domestic interest rate falls domestic investors find foreign lending more attractive and foreign investors find lending here less attractive thus the net capital outflow is negatively related to the interest rate here we add this relationship to our short run model of national income the three equations of the model are y is equal to c into y minus t plus uh, i r plus g plus n x e and we have uh, m over p is equal to l r y and uh, we have n x e is equal to c f r the first two equations are the same as those used in the Mandel Fleming model in our previous video. The third equation uh, we have taken from the classical uh, growth model, which states that the trade balance NX uh, equals the net uh, capital outflow and uh, CF, which is uh, in turn depends on domestic interest rate. Okay, to see what this model implies, substitute the third equation into the first. So the model become as y is equal to c into y minus t plus ir plus g plus cf ir. So we have uh, added the cf in place of nx e. And uh, the third, the second equation we have now uh, MP, M over P or real money balances equal to LRY. So this is our uh, IS equation for the large open economy. This is our LM equation for the large open economy. These equations are much like the two equations of the closed economy of IS and LM model. The only difference is that the expenditure you know, depend on uh, interest rate for two reasons. As before, uh, higher interest rate reduces investment, but now uh, uh, higher interest rate also reduces the net uh, uh, capital outflow and thus uh, lower net exports. So see here we have uh, investment and net capital uh, uh, outflow or, or depend upon our uh, interest rate or domestic interest rate. Okay, let's see a graphical presentation for that, a short run model of a large open economy. We had three panels here. The first panel is related to the IS and LM model. The second panel is related to the net capital outflow. And the third panel is related to the market for the foreign exchange. So let's discuss the first panel, the IS and LM model. We have income output Y on X axis. We have real interest rate R on Y axis. We have an upward sloping LM curve and we have a downward sloping IS curve. We know that uh, the intersection of IS and LM will decide the national income and real interest rate level in the economy. We have uh, Y1 income here and we have R1 real interest rate in the economy. 
Okay, let's take this part to the second panel of above. We have a second panel here, net capital outflow. We have net capital outflow CF on X axis, interest rate R on Y axis. And if we take this interest rate to this part, and we have a negative relationship between the net capital outflow and real interest rate. So this will intersect this point. We have that amount of uh, uh, net capital outflow CF1 and that is our real interest rate. Okay, now we move toward the third panel of the graph that is the market uh, for the foreign exchange. We have net exports and X on X axis, exchange rate E on Y axis and if we take this uh, net capital outflow into this part we have that amount of net capital outflow in this part. So we have a negative uh, relationship between exchange rate and uh, net exports. So we have a downward sloping net exports curve and uh, at uh, this point where CF and net exports uh, curve intersect each other that will be the level of net exports in the economy and that will be the exchange rate in the economy. So panel A start from the panel A uh, shows the IS and LM diagram as in closed economy which we have uh, discussed in our previous videos the interest rate uh, is on the vertical axis which we have discussed and the y income is on our horizontal axis okay the is and lm curve together determine the equilibrium income and interest rate in the economy okay moving towards the uh, net export uh, so the net capital outflow part, the new net capital outflow term in the ISN LM model CFR. Okay, makes this IS curve uh, flatter than uh, than the previous IS curve which we have discussed in our uh, previous videos. So they're more responsive. Uh, 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 international capital flows are uh, to the uh, interest rate so the flatter the is curve so see here we have a flatter is curve you might recall that uh, in our previous video that the small open economy uh, represent the extreme case in which the net uh, capital outflow is uh, infinitely elastic as the uh, when the world interest rate is deciding the domestic interest rate. In this extreme case, the IS uh, curve is completely flat. Hence, a small open economy would be depicted uh, in this figure with a horizontal uh, IS curve. Okay, panel B and panel uh, C uh, shows how the equilibrium from the IS and LM model determine the uh, net capital outflow, the trade balance and the exchange rate. So in the panel B we see that the interest rate determines the net capital outflow in the economy. This curves uh, uh, slopes downward because a higher interest rate discourages uh, the net uh, uh, domestic, uh, uh, we can say that the domestic investors from lending abroad and encourages uh, uh, foreign investors to land here. So in the panel C we see that uh, the exchange rate adjusts to ensure that the net exports of our goods and services uh, equal the uh, net capital outflow. So now let's use this model to examine the impact of various policies. Uh, we use that uh, 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 this model and assume that the economy has a floating exchange rate because this assumption is correct for most large open economy such as that of the United States. So let's discuss first the fiscal policy. Okay, an increase in government purchases or a cut in taxes shifted the IS curve to the right. 
Okay, this shift in the IS curve leads to an increase in the level of income and an increase in the interest rate. So these two effects are similar to those in a closed economy, yet in the large open economy, the higher interest rate reduces the net capital outflow. Okay, the fall in the net capital outflow reduces the supply of dollars in the market for foreign exchange. The exchange rates uh, depreciates. So the appreciate exchange rate must be appreciated. Okay, because domestic uh, goods become more expensive relative to foreign goods, uh, net exports fall. So let's see a graphical presentation for that. Uh, we have a uh, fiscal expansion in a large open economy and here we have a three panel as well that uh, the first panel related to the is and lm model the second panel is related to the net capital outflow and the third panel is related to the market for the foreign exchange okay let's discuss the first panel that we have the is and lm model we have income output y on x axis we have real interest rate are on x-axis we have a upward sloping lm curve we have a downward sloping is curve and the intersection of is and lm will decide the national income of the economy and interest rate in the economy so a fiscal expansion will shifted the is curve will shifted the is curve to the rightward or upward so we have is2 here so this is curve will intersect the lm curve at this point we have a rise in national income from y1 to y2 and we have a rise in real interest rate from r1 to r2 okay moving towards the uh, second panel that is net capital outflow we have uh, net capital outflow on x-axis we have interest rate on, on x-axis we know that there is a negative relationship between interest rate and net capital outflow so our curve look like that so if we take this interest rate to this part we have this intersection this intersection will decide that amount of net capital outflow cf1 with that interest rate so if we take this interest rate to this part r2 we have a rise in interest rate as we have discussed here so we have a fall in uh, net capital outflow which lows a rise in interest rate lows net capital outflow we have uh, CF1 to CF2. Moving towards the third panel that is the market for the foreign exchange. Okay, we have net exports uh, NX on X axis and exchange rate on Y axis. So if we take uh, net, uh, net capital outflow CF1 to this part, we have that amount of we know that there is negative relationship between net exports and exchange rate so we have a downward sloping curve for the net exports here and at this point net export curve will intersect the CF curve at this point and we have uh, that exchange rate with that amount of net exports NX1 so when the CF or we can say the net uh, uh, capital outflow or reduces in the economy this will reduces net exports from this point to this point but raises the exchange rate from E1 to E2 and we have that amount of net exports so this means that we have a reduction in net exports so an expansion in the fiscal policy will raise the national income but uh, also raises the interest rate in the economy and that rise in interest rate will lower the 
uh, net capital outflow in the economy and that lower uh, net capital outflow will raise the exchange rate in the economy and this will reduce the ex net exports in the economy okay uh, this uh, overall presentation shows that the fiscal expansion does raise income in the large economy unlike a small open economy under a floating exchange rate the impact on income however is smaller than in a closed economy in a closed economy the expansionary impact of fiscal policy is partially um, offset uh, by the crowding out of investment as the interest rate rises investment falls reducing the fiscal policy multiplier in a large open economy there is a yet an other offsetting factor as the interest rate rises r1 to r2 and uh, 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 we see that uh, uh, the net capital outflow falls from cf1 to cf2 and the currency appreciated from E1 to E2 in the foreign exchange market and the net exports fall from NX1 to NX2. Together these effects are not large enough to make fiscal policy powerless as uh, it is in a small open economy but they do reduce the impact of fiscal policy. So let's move towards the other policy that is the monetary policy. Okay, an increase in the money supply shifts the LM curve to the right. The level of uh, income rises and interest rate falls. Once again, these effects are similar to those in a closed economy. Yet the lower interest rate leads to a higher net capital outflow. The increase in CF uh, raises the supply of dollars in the market for foreign exchange. So let's see a graphical presentation for that. We have a monetary expansion in a large open economy. We have three panels again here. The first panel is related to the IS and LM model. The second panel is related to the net capital outflow and the third panel is related to the market for the foreign exchange. So let's discuss the first panel, the IS and LM model. We have income output Y on X axis. We have real interest rate R on Y axis. We have an upward sloping LM curve that is LM1 we have a downward sloping IS curve. Okay, we know that the intersection of IS and LM will decide the national income in the economy and real interest rate level in the economy that is R1. So a monetary expansion will uh, shift the I, uh, LM curve to the rightward. So a monetary expansion will shift the IS uh, LM curve to the rightward. So this LM curve will intersect the IS curve at this point. We have a reduction in our interest rate from R1 to R2 and we have a rise in national income from Y1 to Y2. Okay, let's move towards the same panel that is the net capital outflow. We have net capital outflow CF on X axis, interest rate R on Y axis. We have a negative relationship between uh, net capital outflow and interest rate. So we have a downward sloping uh, CF curve. So if we take this interest rate to this part, we have that amount of interest rate with that amount of net capital outflow CF1. So by the expansionary fiscal policy, we have a, a reduction in interest rate and that reduction in interest rate will shift into net capital outflow panel which, which will raises the net capital outflow from CF1 to CF2. 
Okay, moving towards the third panel that the market for the foreign exchange, we have net export NX on X axis, exchange rate uh, E on Y axis. Okay, if we take uh, the negative relationship between the net exports and exchange rate, so our uh, net exports curve look like that, are downward sloping. So, by taking net uh, capital outflow this line to this part, we have uh, this type and the intersection of net exports and uh, CF uh, will decide the exchange rate in the economy that is E1 and level of net exports in the economy. So by reduction in interest rate will raises the net capital outflow and that rise in net capital outflow will also shift in the third panel and this will lower the lower the exchange rate from E1 to E2 because uh, CF curve will intersect the net export curve at this point so we have a reduction in exchange rate and this reduction in exchange rate will raises the net exports from NX1 to NX2 okay we can now see that the monetary expansion mechanism works through two channels in a large open economy as uh, in a closed economy monetary expansion lowers the interest rate which stimulates investment as in a small open economy uh, monetary expansion causes the currency to depreciate uh, in the market for the foreign exchange which stimulates the net exports both effects result in a uh, uh, in a higher level of um, aggregate uh, uh, income in the economy let's move towards the another topic for the large uh, open economy that is a rule of thumb okay this model of large open economy describes well the u.s economy today yet it is somewhat more complicated and cumbersome than the model of closed economy which we have discussed in our previous videos fortunately there is a useful rule of thumb to help you determine how policies influence a large open economy without remembering all the details of the model okay the large open economy uh, is an average of the closed open economy and uh, the small open economy to find how any policy will affect any variable find the answer uh, in the two extreme cases and then take an average of those two okay uh, here we have one of the main question to discuss that how does a monetary contraction affect the interest rate and investment in the short run in a closed economy the interest rate rises and investment falls in a small open economy neither the interest rate nor investment changes the effect in the large open economy is an average of these two cases a monetary contractions uh, raises the interest rate and reduces investment but only somewhat the fall in the net capital outflow mitigates the rise in the interest rate and fall in investment that would occur in a closed economy but unlike a small open economy the international flow of capital is not so strong as to negate fully these effects thus uh, we can say that this rule of thumb makes the simple models all the more valuable although they do not describe perfectly the world in which we live they do provide a useful guide to the effects of economic policies so this is all about a short run model of large open economy so see you with another video ciao